My five-year-old daughter loves to play hide and seek. Sometimes I can't find her. I love my kindergarten age daughter's smile. It's so innocent and cute, her bright white teeth shining against the light as silver shines against the sun. I adore her deep blue eyes, they're like profound unexplored oceans waiting to be discovered. And I cherish her childish giggles whenever she's playing. It reminds me of my bittersweet childhood when I played in the park every single day. Daddy can I go play outside? Alice tugged at my pants while I was making some breakfast. No, Alice, I spoke in my childlike tone, while also messing with her curly blonde hair with my hand. Stop that. She scolded me, trying to remove my hand with her little ones. I left. We have to eat breakfast first. Alice looked at her feet in disappointment, meanwhile rubbing her eyes. Are you sleepy? Alice nodded in response, looking up at me. I looked back at her, into her beautiful eyes. I wondered what they saw when she looked at me. She bobbed her head to one side, another question lingering on her face. What is it? I asked in a kind tone. Alice bobbed her head to the other side. I must have had a confused expression because Alice began giggling. You look funny when you look at me, daddy. She pointed with her index straight at my face. I shook my head, only slightly amused by her random antics. Go take a seat, daddy will finish cooking soon. Alice, still laughing, turned around and took a seat at the back of the kitchen table, looking at me with curiosity. Every time I turned around to look at her, she'd look away and giggle. I tried to play along and catch her looking, but she was skilled. Very skilled. After a minute I turned my attention to the eggs, they were almost finished. They smelled delicious, the spices wafting through the air and into my nostrils. I took two plates from a nearby cupboard and plated the runny eggs, two for Alice, two for me. Ketchup or mayo today? I threw out the question without looking at Alice. Alice, I asked again after having opened the fridge. She wasn't answering. I turned around to look at the kitchen table, at the spot where she sat. She was gone. I chuckled to myself and shook my head. Come out, Alice. We can play after we eat breakfast. I changed my tone to a more serious one, to indicate to Alice that I wasn't playing anymore. I closed the fridge again inside. Some mornings are like this, she hides somewhere around our small two-room apartment, and I have to find her. My eyes darted around the kitchen, looking out for any open cupboards or poking out feet or clothes of Alice. After opening up some spacier ones, I was confident she wasn't in there and moved on to my room. I checked under the bed, I checked inside of the wardrobe, making sure to properly look inside. I looked at every crevice and corner, but she wasn't there either. I took a glance inside our bathroom, looking behind the curtains, but it was clear too, leaving the small hallway only possessing a small shoe rack in her bedroom. I skipped going to the hallway as there was nowhere to hide there and went straight to her bedroom. At first glance it looked untouched, her small single bed was still messy and unmade, her toys were still scattered around from last night's play, and her clothes were still laying on the ground beside the bed. Alice, where are you? I said in that childish that parents like to use when searching for their children. I heard something shuffling in the wardrobe, so I decided to play along and let her have some fun. Are you under the covers? I said dramatically while simultaneously lifting those into the air. No, maybe under the bed. I crouched down and looked below. No, then maybe inside the wardrobe. I began slowly tiptoeing towards it, trying not to make a sound. I could hear faint giggling coming from inside. Once I got to the doors, the giggling stopped. I put my hands on both handles and swung the doors wide open. Gotcha, Alice, Alice. My heart dropped when I realized that there was nothing inside. Okay, I lose. Come out please. I was frantically looking around. She was just giggling. It wasn't coming from the wardrobe, then where? I searched the apartment one more time frantically, checking even the more illogical spots. But in the end, I couldn't find Alice. I checked all the windows and even the front door. Every entryway was still locked from the inside. She had to be inside the apartment. Alice, this isn't funny. Please come out. I'm worried. My voice was frantic and scared now. I went inside her room one more time, looking everywhere. She wasn't under the bed, she wasn't on the bed, she wasn't in any corner hiding behind some furniture, and she wasn't inside the wardrobe either, I slammed the door shut in anger. Alice just vanished into thin air. My breathing got heavy. I sat down on her bed and just began sobbing. How could she just disappear? My mind couldn't come up with any logical explanation. Children don't just disappear from home in a couple of minutes, with all doors and windows still locked shut from the inside. I scrambled to get my phone from my pocket. I needed to call the police. Daddy, her worried voice suddenly rang out behind me. I snapped my head to look in that direction. Alice was just standing there, her hands clasped together, tears rolling down her cheeks. The wardrobe doors were wide open behind her. Alice, I shouted and ran to hug her. She began sobbing too. Do you know how worried I was? Where were you hiding? Alice pointed to the wardrobe in between sobs. It wasn't possible. I checked it thoroughly. I just wanted to play daddy, I'm sorry. She hugged me tighter. She was just as terrified as I was. Maybe because once she came out, she saw me crying. After some time, we both calmed down and went to eat breakfast, but the eggs had gotten cold. We played hide and seek again five days later. Daddy, can we play hide and seek? She asked all of a sudden while we were watching some cartoons. That immediately reminded me of the scare I had five days ago, and I was very reluctant. I don't know, Alice, it's almost bedtime. Placier. She clasped her palms together while her deep blue eyes looked at me like some cute puppy. They were somehow different from before. I didn't know what it was, but I had a strange feeling while I looked into them, as if I was looking at art. I sighed in defeat. Fine, but only if you promise to come out if daddy tells you to. Wait, no fair. You'll cheat. She crossed her arms and huffed, looking away from me. I couldn't help but laugh. If I don't find you, I'll tell you to come out, and you'll win, okay. She turned her head back around, her eyes were now full of joy and excitement. Her beautiful smile was infectious. Okay, she exclaimed. Count to twenty, daddy. She jumped off my king-size bed and began walking to the door. Close your eyes. And she shut the door shut. I laughed a little, reminiscing about how excited I used to be when I played hide and seek with my mom. Then I began counting, taking extra time with each number, knowing full well that if I go out before she has found a spot, I'd have to restart all over again. 18, 19, 20, ready or not, here I come. 
I stood up and walked over to the door. I stood for a moment, just listening for any sounds, to try and figure out the direction in which I'd be searching. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't trying to find her so fast. I wanted to go in the opposite direction first so there would be no complaints later, in case I did find her quickly. I however heard no noise being made. Where are you? I said in the same childish tone again, drawing out each syllable, hoping for some sort of reaction, a shuffle, or a giggle. But no reaction came. I shrugged and just picked the kitchen as the first spot at random. It didn't take long to clear that, as there weren't many hiding spots, due to how small our apartment is, and due to how often we play hide and seek, she's hidden everywhere possible at least three times, and I know all of those spots. Next, I moved to the hallway for a quick check, I know she can't hide there when it's light out, but when it's dark it's a whole different story, she can hide in the shadows. After clearing that, her room was the only spot left. Alice, are you in here? I asked in my typical childish tone. No giggle or shuffle came, so I just began slowly checking each spot, while simultaneously trying to gouge a reaction by speaking to her. After I checked the wardrobe first, and under the bed second, I realized that she wasn't in there. I almost began panicking, but then it hit me, I completely skipped the bathroom. I took a deep breath and tiptoed to it, trying to catch her off guard. I lightly knocked on the bathroom door, and I could hear a giggle, which was quickly stifled. Alice, are you in there? I playfully asked. Another stifled giggle came from the other side. I slowly opened the door and peered inside, the curtains were drawn shut. I slowly tiptoed to the bath and pulled the curtains open. But she wasn't there. I looked around the bathroom for another possible hiding spot that I missed. I turned around and looked behind the door, but she wasn't there. I look at other corners of the small corridor like bathroom, but she was nowhere to be found. I began panicking just like five days ago. Alice, where are you? Come out, daddy gives up. I tried to use the rule I came up with before we started the game, but Alice wasn't coming out. I searched the entire apartment once more. I simply couldn't find her. It had happened again. I just barely kept myself calm enough not to call the police right then and there. She disappeared last time and reappeared just a couple of minutes later. I took a deep breath, deciding that I'd wait 15 minutes for her to appear again, and if she doesn't I'd call the police. I took a seat at the kitchen table, my nerves were killing me. 5 minutes passed. Nothing. 10 minutes passed. Nothing. 15 minutes passed. Nothing. I stood up and shakily walked over to the now closed bathroom door. I lightly knocked. I could hear her giggle coming from the other side. Alice. I threw open the door and pulled back the curtains in one fell swoop. There was nobody there. I walked out of the bathroom, now shaking, and closed the door again. I began weeping, my back to the bathroom door. Daddy. I heard her familiar voice say from the other side. Alice. I wiped away my snot and tears. Don't cry, daddy. She said in a saddened tone. I moved away from the door and opened it. There was nobody inside. Was I going crazy? Alice. I asked into the bathroom. No response came. I closed the door again. Alice. I asked again, trying to test my hypothesis. Daddy. I heard her say from the other door. I pushed myself away from the door, looking at it in horror. Can you come out? Remember. You promised. I said in a shaky voice. Okay. Alice responded sounding disappointed. I watched as the door handle turned and Alice walked out of the bathroom. The same bathroom that I had checked numerous times. The same bathroom that was empty just a second ago. Alice walked up to me with a somewhat amused expression on her face, a slight grin tugging at her mouth. Why are you on the ground, daddy? She giggled, finding this very funny. I was horrified. How is this possible? I stood up and wiped away my unnoticed tears. Alice, can you do something for me? Yes, she said excitedly. Can you go into the bathroom and close the door? Okay. She skipped into the bathroom and did as told. I slowly walked over and opened the door with shaky hands. Sure enough, she was gone. Alice, I called out into the bathroom, but she didn't respond. I closed the door. You can come out. The door handle turned and Alice skipped back out again. I cursed under my breath. Daddy, you can't say that word. Alice scolded me. That put a smile on my face. Come on, it's time for bed. I told Alice, and we walked over to her bedroom. I kissed her goodnight and walked out of the room, closing the door. But just to confirm something, I opened the door again. Alice was still in bed. Did you forget something, Daddy? She asked. No, good night, Alice. I began closing the door, but left it just slightly ajar, then walked over to my bedroom, and changed into my pajamas. I couldn't sleep that night. I couldn't wrap my head around what the hell was happening, or how to explain it. Alice disappeared one more time, the very next day, which happens to be today. It had gotten light out, and I had gotten no sleep. I yawned as I got out of bed and dressed again, while also checking the time. It was 7 a.m., around the usual time when I cooked breakfast. I walked into the kitchen and made myself some tea, while also looking in the fridge for something tasty to make. I decided on making pancakes and got to work. I was done by 7.40 a.m., and they smelled delicious. I walked over to Alice's room with the plate and syrup in hand, a wide grin on my face. I knocked on the door. Wakey wakey. I turned the doorknob and opened the door. Alice was nowhere to be found, her bed was made, the opposite of our every morning. Then it hit me. I opened the door today. I left it open last night, which means Alice closed it. I walked out of the room and closed the door, now feeling more confident with my new knowledge of what was happening. She just needs to open the door again and all will be fine. Alice, sweetie, are you in there? I called out gently. Yes, daddy. Her cheerful voice came from the other side. Can you open the door for me? I asked. Can't you do it yourself? Alice sounded like she was pouting. Please. I tried reasoning with her. I heard her huff and then her little footsteps getting closer. Daddy, I can't open it. She said matter-of-factly. Even if I say please. No, you don't understand. Daddy, it's locked. My heart dropped and I instinctively opened the door. Alice, Alice, the room was just as empty as the last time I looked inside. I closed the door again, taking a deep breath. Can you try now? Nuha still locked daddy. Her door indeed has a lock, but the key has been lost even before we moved into this apartment. Besides, I can open the door fine. Daddy, Alice asked from the other side. Just wait there, okay? I'll unlock it for you. I searched the house for the key, but I found no such thing. Alice, are you still in there? Daddy, I'm hungry, can you unlock the door now? Her sweet voice wanted to make me cry, because I didn't know how to get her out of there. I must be missing something, some vital point that I missed in all of this. But I can't figure out what it is. Alice began softly crying on the other side. What's wrong Alice? I want to come out. She shouted at me. She was upset. She must think I locked her inside. I know sweetie, I'm trying. 
I couldn't take it anymore. My tears were flowing too. I didn't know how to help her. And I couldn't just call the police and tell them that my daughter is trapped in some interdimensional space inside of her room. It has been two hours now, and I'm at my end's meet. I opened the door to her room so I couldn't hear her screaming and crying. It hurt as much as a knife would while piercing each of my organs. If anybody knows anything about this, if anybody knows anyone who could help, please tell me, I want my daughter back.